Howdy folks, I appreciate you joining me in the reloading shack once again. This video I'm going to focus on 300 Blackout Subsonics, specifically the 220 grain Sierra Match King. And the reason for that is because a couple weeks ago I received back a tax stamp. For my Form 1 suppressor, it's a titanium tube and internals with aluminum end caps. This is my first suppressor, and it will be my first time ever shooting anything suppressed. So, I don't know how good it'll be. I have no experience with commercial cans to compare it to. But what I do want to compare is the claim that I see online a lot that people say... Accurate 1680 suppressed is very loud. Now you've seen the 300 blackout video previously that I have worked with 1680 in the past. It has been my go-to just because it cycles. I've never had any issues and I never had to worry about a suppressor before. But one thing that caught my eye, I found a thread where people were saying how quiet accurate number 9 is. So I've got some of that. I'm going to try it out. Now although it's claimed to be quiet... Some people say they have difficulty locking the bolt back before they reach 1,050 feet per second. So it appears to be more of a bolt gun application than semi-auto. So I'm going to take it as sort of a challenge and see if I can get bolt lock back with and without the suppressor before I hit that 1,050 feet per second mark. It may be a little bit easier for me because I have a 9 inch barrel. Um, I didn't look too much into it, but I have a feeling some of those claims I was reading were 16-inch barrels, possibly even a gas system longer than pistol length. So once again, I'll be using my converted Lake City Blank 556 brass that's prepped, ready to load. I'll be using CCI 400 small rifle primers as always. I'm going to go from 11.7 to 12.1 grains of 1680 and 8.2 to 8.6 grains of accurate number 9 and hopefully I should be in the ballpark for that range we're looking for. So now all the brass has been primed I just do it right here on my Hornady lock and load. So now I'm going to start throwing powder charges. The first one I'm looking for is 11.7 grains of accurate 1680. So I'm going to tear out my scale case on it right under the powder measure. 10.9 so I'm going to open that a bit more all right that one's at 11.7 so I'm just going to keep going for these first five cases so you're probably wondering why I'm going through all the trouble of doing this on my progressive press instead of doing it with a standalone powder measure or a trickler maybe and the answer to that is because I don't have them I've been reloading, I think I just hit three years now, and most people start off on a single stage with a standalone powder drop. I didn't. I was fortunate enough and uh, I felt like I was knowledgeable enough at the time. This is the first press that I ever got, and the second press I got was a single stage, imagine that. But so the only powder measure I've ever had is the case activated powder drop on my Hornady lock and load. I sort of adapted to this way of doing it when I want to weigh out every charge individually. And it works pretty well for me. I've developed a system and I don't feel the need for a standalone powder measure. None of the cartridges I load for right this moment are match cartridges or anything like that. So... Down the road, if I ever get into something, it's one of those crazy match cartridges or something, that just doesn't seem to be in my wheelhouse. I can't shoot that good anyway. And my wife will tell you I spend too much time out here as it is loading this ammo just for fun. you know. So, maybe someday I'll wind up with a standalone and a trickler. And if I do, you'll know about it. But until then, this is what works for me. So I've got my first five charges thrown, and now I'm going to go ahead and set up my seating die. My overall length of this bullet is 2.20. I 
I have a feeling it's set pretty close, but I might have to finish it off just a little bit. Just a touch long. I'm going to leave that one be for a minute. I'm going to seed another one and make sure it's not just a consistency in the bullet and the ogive. These are pulled. So sometimes they bounce around a couple thousands here and there. Oh, wow. 2.209. That was longer than I thought. So I'm going to run that one in. About four thousandths. Huh. I hit that guesstimate right on the nose. That would have never happened off camera. So this is the 205. Should be down to 201. Oh, 200. So for my needs, that looks to be set just where I want it. So I'll go ahead and seat these five. Good enough for the work we're doing. Quick run in our slide case gauge shows everything's fine. So now I'm going to start dropping the rest of these powder charges. So I finished the 15 rounds loaded with accurate 1680. Now I'm working through my powder charges of number nine. I'm going with 8.2 to 8.6 grains. And the information I saw online, the individuals who did disclose their load data, they all fell right around that 7.8 to 8.2 range. Again, I don't recall the exact specifics of their barrels. So now I'm just working on seating the last of these bullets. Everything seems to be going as planned. Let's hope it stays that way. Now, as much as I would like to be able to tell y'all that I'm just that kind of go-getter who took some random person's load off the internet and ran with it, well, that's not me. I can't lie to you. I did a little bit of ladder testing last week without the suppressor, and I started at 7.6 grains and worked my way up to 8.2, which the other day gave me about 975 feet per second. Well, we're rounding third base, almost finished up here. Just checking each of them in my case gauge. Make sure no surprises sneak up on us. But I think we're ready to see what these will do. So I'm starting with just one round of the lowest charge of accurate number nine to see if it locks the bolt back unsuppressed. I know 1680 operates this gun flawlessly. Cool. 1012. I thought we had bolt lock back, but it actually caught on the face of the carrier. So now I'm going to go ahead and run the next charge just one round to see where it sits.
1005 and that we did get bolt lock back on the bolt face. Now we're moving on to Accurate 1680. Now be sure to listen and see if those rounds of number 9 were any quieter than these are. On the last shot, I get an error. So here's what the target looks like. Lowest charge of accurate number 9, second and third. First charge of 1680, second and third. This was the first round of 1680. That was the second, and then it slowly got better. As you can see, it starts tightening up here, and the last one doesn't look too bad. So I'll have to look and see what caused that keyhole. I'm glad I didn't get a baffle strike with it.